Today I'll share with you my standard pedal boat propulsion system. The crutch drive. Wait, what? Seriously? Who wrote this script? This video is sponsored by Freensub. It's summer and you probably noticed I'm trying to spend more time outside. Especially during these hot summers, I was always enviously looking at the people enjoying their stand-up pedal boats. I decided to change that this year and join the club of the peaceful peddlers. Staring at my sandals. That's a peddling. While looking for some new brand deals to keep my channel afloat, I came across free and sub. I poked them and they were super kind to send me two units to test. I even got some discount codes for you. Please check the description for details as any sold unit will help this channel. We have been using the subs for weeks now and they are great. The quality and accessories are convincing. Please show them some love for supporting this channel. This being a maker channel doesn't even matter. If Colin first can have brand deals, so can I. And you know me, I turn everything into a project. So what I imagined was to get familiar with the subs and then add a DIY propulsion system to take them on longer expeditions. I got the kayak type subs which came with an extra seat that can be strapped on. The pump that comes with the subs has a pressure gauge and I was surprised that the typical pressure of operation is around 15 psi which is about 1 bar. It's quite a warm up to get it there. But at the end it almost gets as stiff as a solid surfboard. There are also electric pumps available if you only want to chill. I tried a small car tire compressor, but I had the impression it would burst into flames before I was able to pump the volume needed. We both are new to this and never tried subs before. While Tony had no problems keeping the balance right away, I was less successful staying dry. But after a few tries it almost became a second nature. You just need to relax your legs. And oh boy is this relaxing if you can find a peaceful lake like we did on our second trip. When my body rests, my mind is running circles with the idea to add some kind of electric propulsion. Back in my lab I checked for the appropriate parts and found some chunky water-cooled RC bot motor, controller and some lithium ion phosphate batteries. I only needed to get some connectors attached and program the controller. A nice trick to make your own connectors is to take a piece of copper pipe and squish it. Okay. Setting up the controller turned out being annoying. I wasn't able to set a speed with a regular PWM input. Oh shit! That would change my controller modes. It needed to be a PPM signal from a remote or a microcontroller. 
This somehow turns out more and more complicated. Do I really want all these parts on my sub? As the next step I started to design a prop and I kept it really simple. It was as simple as a rotational model of three blades. Not optimized and easy printable. Ship it. By drilling out the shaft I realized that the things I built tend to be way over complicated. Why all those controllers, water cooling, microcontrollers, battery packs, if I can simply use a drill? I heated up the shaft and hammered it in. Drill attached to the other end and it was as simple as effective. I had to test the prop in the water with some scale. It had around 30 newtons of push, but the rotation direction gave it an annoying drift which I needed to address. I decided to add a duct around the prop. Since the duct is now stationary, it has to be attached to an outer pipe and the best fit I was able to find was in crutch from the trash. This is screwed on. We can mount this thing here, like that. This will go through here. Drill can be like that. So we need to drill a hole here for the shaft and a hole here for the mounting to the sub. I also needed to separate the rotating prop from the stationary duct while transmitting the push force. A skater bearing in between was good enough for that. Getting the bearing on the shaft required to send the shaft down a bit. The prop wouldn't sit on the shaft tight anymore, so I added the pin that was already modeled in any way. You can download the models from the description if you need an inspiration. Somehow the crutch seemed to be handy, so I left the upper part almost completely intact. I can still use it as a crutch if I break my leg with my pocket bike. Okay. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Let's test it outside. The push for didn't change much, but the drift was gone. Excellent! There is only one thing left to do. Okay. <laughs> I have no clue. I couldn't read it. This first design performed okay-ish. I noticed it has the strongest push when it's completely submerged and doesn't draw in any air. Oh, I don't think this is good. Thankfully this isn't salt water, so it's a little bit more forgiving. I also should make sure that the chuck is completely closed.
I hope you liked the project and I hope I didn't destroy my drill. See you next time, subscribe and thank you to all my supporters. Bye! Let's go home, shall we? <laughs>